Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. I want to introduce you to uh, the author of a provocative book. You like that word? Well, I've always lived that way. Oh, well, he is uh, Herb Stern. Diary of a DA, the true story of the prosecutor who took on the mob, fought corruption, and won. Herb Stern is not only the former U.S. attorney in the great state of New Jersey, but uh, worked in the DA's office in uh, New York. And man, he saw a lot in the 1960s and 70s, and he's an icon. And I want to thank you for joining us. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for having me. <sighs> Let's put things in perspective. Um, you were the U.S. attorney in New Jersey in, during what years? From uh, 1971 to 74. Okay. Let's put, let's do the Newark piece, selfishly for me, okay? Because you know New York and New Jersey. Yes. And you worked in the DA's office in New York from when? 62 to uh, 65. You know both sides. Oh, I'll do, before I do the Newark thing, is there a difference between New York corruption and New Jersey corruption? Takes the money, it's the same beast. Not that much different? Not that much different. Okay. Still, there was more of it here. Yeah, and more of it, right? Well, in yeah. Newark, where I grew up, as you know, um, I grew up when the mayor was uh, Hugh Adonisio. Yes. And we had a police director, Spina. Dominic Spina. Yes. And is it fair to say that the police director um, had some relationships with members of organized crime? I think it's more than fair to say that because it is actually true. Adonisio put him in, the mob put in Adonisio, and uh, Spina was real tight with the mob. Let's do this, guys. As uh, Judge Stern is talking about this. Let's show a picture. This is a picture, Steve Barcy, our cameraman. Describe you at Anizio, okay? Describe you at Anizio, and then I'm gonna show Tony Boy Boyardo, who yeah. is the connection. This is, this is, he's being walked out where, Judge? Well, he's leaving, he's just been uh, sentenced to prison 10 years. He's being let out, and he's, he's handcuffed. For know. what? For extortion, taking money. He took money from the mob for what? Gave him contracts. Look, uh, just one contract, for example, the Southside Interceptor Sewer System, which is about 1963, was a $10 million contract. Now, we proved that uh, the, the contractors who got it huh, took $1 million, washed it through a bank account run by a fellow by the name of Cantor. He was dying of the Lou Gehrig's disease, and he testified with his wife as an interpreter. In any event, they took 10%, washed it through, and passed it back to Boyardo, Tony Boy Boyardo, who then paid off half the city administration, including the mayor. One contract, 1962 or three dollars, mm. ten million dollars, one million going back. Today's money it would be enormous. And this is uh, mafia boss in Newark, Anthony Tony Boy Boyardo, right here. And make the connection, if you will, uh, Judge Stern. Tony Borboyardo and the Soprano, Sopranos. That's the model. That's the, that's the model for Tony Soprano. Is that right? Yeah. I, so, so David Chase, in putting it together, said, I'm looking for someone who is someone who was tied to these politicians in New Jersey, who was involved in these public contracts. Tony Borboyardo, that was the guy. Well, I think you, that's right. And uh, you remember, David Chase grew up in New Jersey. He grew up around Livingston. And uh, <clears throat> Boyardo's father, Richie the Boot Boyardo. Richie the Boot. You remember him? Absolutely. I know yeah. up in the house in Livingston. Yes. I know that I heard that underneath the house there may have been... Not may have been. There was. What? Uh, a furnace. They had an incinerator. They burned the bodies there. That's not urban legend. That's not our... In the book, we have transcripts of them being recorded discussing the, how they burned the bodies. And uh, forgive this, little pussy Russo is recorded about how Little they... Pussy Russo, not to be confused with Big Pussy Russo. Correct. Both, by the way, both names were used by David Chase and The Sopranos. That's right. That's well, right. That's right, sure. As you matter, lived it. That's a TV show. You lived it. Yeah, it was fun. Well, right. Let me ask you something. When you were going after these guys, right. New York and New Jersey, but on the New Jersey side, yeah. was there ever a part of you that ever said... I'm uncomfortable doing this. Why would I be uncomfortable? I was chasing them. <laughs> they weren't chasing me. There was no part of you. When you were growing up, did you say, I want to get the bad guys? 
well, you know, I didn't, I didn't know about the Sopranos when I was growing up, or the, but uh, when I when I became an assistant DA in Manhattan, I mean, that was, I was committed to doing that sort of work, and, you know, even in the DA's office there, I, I, I fell into the Malcolm X case. You know, I arrested the men who killed Malcolm Murder X. Murder of Malcolm X. Yeah. At the Audubon Ballroom. Absolutely, February twenty fifth. Wow, that was your case. Yeah. Well, it's my case. I caught it. I presented it to the grand jury, and then I, I left. I went down to the Department of Justice, and then he sent me to New Jersey. Wow. Uh, you know, you, you've said, not only in the book, but you've said in other interviews, that you feel that in many ways we in the media have glorified organized crime and presented it in such a way where it's just, we don't do justice to how brutal and disgusting they really are. Put it in perspective. Well, that's absolutely true. You know, the, uh, we have seen them become a cult, but they were vicious, homicidal, corrupt, and, I mean, just brutal. Um, you know, in the book, we describe some of it. In court, we described a lot of it, and uh, they had to be rooted out. The problem in New Jersey was that nobody had done anything about it for so many, 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 many years. Look. If you don't take care of your teeth, you're going to have a lot of trouble. And there's going to be a lot of rot there. If you go periodically, you'll pull some rot out, but it's never going to get out of control. It was out of control here, totally out of And New Jersey was a joke. What do you mean? It was a joke in the, in the nation. Everybody looked at us and said, you know, it's the most corrupt state in the country. Probably was, too, because nobody did anything about it for so many years. And you had in Hudson County, which, in my opinion, in many ways, was worse than Newark. You said it was the most corrupt place in America. Without a doubt. Jersey City and Hudson County overall? Absolutely. You know what we found? This is really shocking. Go ahead. We found a bank account in Florida where the mayor of Jersey City and the president of the city council <laughs> had a joint bank account with $1,231,000 in it in 1965. You know what kind of money that is today? Multiple millions. Incredible. They even made the city workers kick back 3% of their salaries. Now, everybody who did work for the city in terms of contractors, suppliers, engineers, they had to kick back. Everybody's 10, kicking back. 10%. Well, you couldn't get a contract. You couldn't work. It was called a way of life. They had to, you know, it started with Frank Haig, who you've heard of, and then John Frank, B I am the law, Haig. That's exactly right. And then, and then uh, John B. Kenny took over from him. And then we put him away. Wow. Today, to what extent do you believe? I mean, Chris Christie, we've interviewed many, many times when he was U.S. attorney, right. but also as governor many, many times. To what, do you believe, do you, to what degree do you believe today, Judge? And again, you were elevated to the court, and so I refer yeah, to you as Judge. You. It's very nice of you. Well, you earned it many times over. Judge, to what degree do you believe we still earn the reputation as being a corrupt state? It, we don't earn it. It's not true anymore. Well, do we have some corruption? Of course we do. I mean, you're not going to end corruption until you change human nature entirely. But, what, but our present situation has nothing to do with what existed in the 60s and the 70s and the 50s and the 40s. You know, you have another TV show, Boardwalk Empire. Yes. That's seven, New Jersey. That was the Republican. Atlantic City, Nucky yeah. Thompson. Republicans down there. Yeah, his real name was John, uh, J Johnson. Yeah, Nucky they, Johnson. They changed they, it. They changed it. Uh, and we got them, too. We convicted the mayors of uh, Atlantic City. If the place it, between the, the corrupt pals, the mob, and then you had the unions. You had Tony Pro. Vanzano. Tony Pro Vanzano. Yeah. And then you had a guy named Pete Weber who actually the Department of Justice that set me up to, that's how I first came here. Between the racketeers and the politicians and the corrupt labor leaders, there was nothing like it in the United States. You know there's a real reason why they have these TV shows that seem to focus on New Jersey. Because it was, uh, was real. It was real, sure it was real. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. Uh, we are not doing justice, speaking about justice, we're not doing justice to this book. We're just barely scratching the surface. It's called Diary of a DA. Herbert J. Stern, the true story, the very true story. A lot of stuff is mythical. This is true. 
the true story of the prosecutor who took on the mob, fought corruption, and won. I'll tell you, it's great stuff. And by the way, the other thing you'll see in here is a lot of cartoons uh, from the Star Ledger, when uh, Star Ledger cartoons really talk about the impact of those cartoons. Bill and all, a lot of great pictures of you and your dad in here, too. Wow, well, it's very important to me. Yeah. You know. Well, for Just those like of us, you and your dad. Absolutely right. And for those of us who are born and raised in this state, particularly if you're born and raised in Newark in an awfully corrupt time and a corrupt community, if it were not for uh, the Herb Stearns of the world, uh, we, it wouldn't have turned out the way it has in a much better situation. You honor us by being here, Judge. You honor me by what you said, and I thank you for having me. Thank you, Judge. Stay right there. One-on-one -on -one will continue right after this. Stay with us. Thank you very much. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, Wells Fargo, the Adler Aphasia Center, PSENG, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. The law firm of Gibbons PC. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, making healthcare work. And by Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, Everything Jersey. And by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.